It's a real pleasure for me to be here today and meet all the Rotarians of Santa Barbara. And to get started, I'd like to see by show of hands how many of you are great musicians. Well, there's a couple. That's wonderful. And how many of you enjoy great music? Aha, nearly everyone. So that demonstrates that everyone can enjoy great music, even those of us who aren't great musicians. And I think the same is true for science. Everyone can enjoy the exciting discoveries and the intriguing mysteries of our universe, even those who fear physics and are allergic to math. <laughs> so I'd like to demonstrate that today by talking about the most famous scientist in history, Albert Einstein. Kathleen said that was a picture of me when I was younger, but actually, <laughs> that's Einstein. Now, Albert Einstein was selected by Time Magazine as the most important person of the 20th century. I mean, can you imagine that? All the people that lived in the 20th century, and they picked a physicist as the most important person, saying that he had the greatest mind and was the paramount icon of our age. And indeed, his name has become synonymous in our language with the word genius. So one might think that with all that going for him, Einstein's life was a bed of roses, an endless sequence of accolades and accomplishments. But actually the truth is much more interesting and surprising because hardly anyone has failed more often or faced more rejection in their life than did Albert Einstein. In fact, he got off to a bad start. He was very slow to learn to talk. His younger sister had to help him communicate. He was expelled from the second grade for being inattentive. The headmaster declared, this little boy will never amount to anything. <laughs> and he was almost right. He dropped out of high school with two and a half years left and tried to get into a lower level college, but failed the entrance exam. He did manage to graduate on time, but with the second worst grades in the class. <laughs> and along the way, he had made a point of publicly insulting all of his professors, so they considered him to be somewhat bright, but definitely unbearably insolent, and his math professor called him a lazy dog. <laughs> so with terrible grades and the most atrocious imaginable references, Einstein was the only member of his graduating class who couldn't get a job. He applied to every technical institute and university from Norway to Italy, and he was summarily rejected at every one. He wasn't even granted a single interview in two years of job searching. And had it not been for wealthy relatives, this man would have been homeless. Finally, the father of one of his friends, who had a lot of juice in the Swiss government, managed to get a position open for him in the patent office. This was a slam dunk. The position was written with Einstein's credentials, or should I say lack of credentials in mind, and he felt he only had to show up and the job would be his and he'd be set. So he strode in to the interview and promptly failed the interview. <laughs> the interviewer rated Albert Einstein technically unqualified to be a government clerk. <laughs> now thankfully for science, political influence trumped the search for civil service competency and Einstein was hired nonetheless. Now of course this would never happen in our society today. <laughs> he was given uh, the position of patent clerk third class with a minimum wage job and hoping that he would be able to get a promotion to second class and maybe be able to support the family that he wanted to start with his, the love of his life. He applied for a PhD at the University of Zurich and in his PhD, he denounced by name several of the most prominent physicists of the day, declaring how infantile their theories were. <laughs> and his thesis was rejected. So by his own actions, this young man at first firmly placed himself on a path to failure and obscurity. And it seemed that he would fulfill the prophecies of his many detractors and never amount to anything. But Einstein succeeded because he had in abundance one characteristic that I think is the most important ingredient in success in any field at all of human endeavor. And that is the guy never quit. He had tremendous persistence. Asked later in life why he had succeeded, he said, it's not that I'm so smart, it's that I stay with problems longer. 
In other words, he didn't quit. He could work on a problem night and day for 10 years with no chance of success showing, but still, he wouldn't quit. Now, this is Einstein's laboratory, and every instrument that he used in his entire life is sitting on the top of that desk, a pad of paper and a pen. This, the most famous scientist in history, never did a single experiment in his entire life. He never made a serious measurement or observation, and everything he discovered came completely from his own thoughts. In 1905, these thoughts gelled, and he published five spectacular papers. And that feat has never even been closely matched by any scientist before or since. In these papers, he solved all the open issues in physics of the day, and he declared to scientists that after 400 years, they still didn't understand how to properly weigh uh, objects, how to measure distances, or how to measure time. And they didn't understand the true nature of light, matter, or motion. And if you take all that away from physics, you know, there really isn't a whole lot left. <laughs> so he demolished an entire major science and replaced it with a whole new set of concepts. Well, he figured now he was set. He had solved all the problems of physics. He had revolutionized the field. He would simply have to wait for universities to beat a path to his door with glorious job offers. And he waited. But nothing happened. No one responded. No one said, great paper. No one said, come give us a talk. No one said, here's a job, come work for us. Years went by, and he got no response. He did finally get a PhD for the least revolutionary of all of these papers. But after two years of no jobs, he applied to be a high school physics teacher, and he was summarily rejected again, because he was obviously unqualified to teach high school students about physics. It took four years after his so-called miracle year for him to get his first academic appointment, a junior professorship at the University of Zurich. He then started climbing the academic ladder, moving from one university to the next. And finally, in 1914, uh, sorry, 1913, Max Planck, the most famous scientist of the day, said of Einstein that there was hardly a problem in physics to which Einstein had not made a major contribution. And with Planck's strong endorsement, Einstein got the best job in the world. Not just then, but the best job ever, I think. It came in three parts. First of all, he was a full professor at the University of Berlin with the promise he would never have to teach a single class. <laughs> Secondly, he was made director of a new institute of physics with the promise he would never have to do any work there either. And thirdly, he became a member of the Prussian Academy of Science with the promise there were no duties there as well. So he had three full salaries, a very nice office, and they said, go think. And if you come up with something nice, kindly let us know. I'm sorry to tell you that job is no longer available. <laughs> Finally, Einstein received the highest honor in physics, the 1921 Nobel Prize. So let's talk about what this man discovered. 